Hello Form B. This is a short tutorial on how to do your line graph for your plant growth lab. First, you need to make sure that you have all four of your data tables filled out with their numbers. So this is my first scenario data table. I did LED lights, have all my data there. I have my second scenario data table. I did halogen lights. Again, I have all my data in there. I have my third data table, third scenario incandescent lights. I have all my data there. And then it's really this fourth data table that I'm going to use to make my line graph. And this is my average height data table where I have my average height for my LEDs. I have my average height for my halogens and I have my average height for my incandescence. Right? To create the line graph, you want to copy your average height data table. So you highlighted all of it and then you hit Command C or Control C, depending on what kind of computer you have. Now you need to go to Google Sheets to then create the line graph after you have copied the average height data table in your Google Doc. So I'm going to go to Google Sheets and here I have an untitled spreadsheet. And so then I'm going to hit Command V or Control V to then paste my data table here into Google Sheets. Now, one part that I am going to need to fix on my data table is that Google Sheets does not like graphing letters. It only likes graphing numbers. So even though I had no data taken during my day number nine, I need to get rid of those values. I'm not going to put in any numbers in there, um, and but it will the graph will just create a blank space on there for day number nine. Right. To create my graph, I need to highlight the entire data table. Okay. And then over here on the right, there is a little box. It looks kind of like a, a graph and it says insert chart. So I'm going to choose that. And then there's lots of different options uh, to go for uh, creating it. So they already recognize that I kind of want to make a line graph over the number of days, but there's some parts of it that don't make a lot of sense. Um, the first part is this part where it says like average height, average height, average height. Um, instead, I want them to let them know that my blue line is my LED um, light, my red line is my halogen, and my yellow line is my incandescent. To fix that, down here it says row two as headers. If I unclick it, it will then just not have any labels on it. But then if I click it again, Magically, it then grabs and says first scenario LED, second scenario halogen, third scenario incandescent. So that is the way to make sure that your labels of your different lines um, correspond to your different variables that you made. Okay. The next thing that you want to make sure is that your titles are correct. Okay, And so you have to go to customize. It's over here on the right hand side. So you choose customize. And then the next one is chart, axis, and title. So if I click on chart, axis, and title, um, the first thing I want to do is I want to change the chart title. So I'm going to choose chart title. And right now it's like first scenario LED. It's this all this nonsense up here. And so I'm going to delete all of that. So I get rid of all of that. And so my chart title is going to end up being the height of my plants versus my day number. So I will then write height of plants, okay, versus day number. Okay. And you can see as I'm typing it here, then it shows up up above there. All right. So height of plants versus day number is my title. I, I have day number down here. But they didn't put height of plants um, over here on the left-hand side. So I need to then choose my vertical axis title. And here I'm going to then write my vertical is height of plants. And we measured that in centimeters. So we choose that height of plants in centimeters. You can see that that uh, is there accordingly. All right, so I've got height of plants, I have day number, I've got height of plants versus day number here, and I've got my labels accordingly. All right. The last thing that we need to uh, do for our line chart is we need to kind of help our grid lines because it doesn't really help us know exactly where anything um, was, and we want to make it a little bit tighter. So 
There's another option here, it says grid lines and ticks. And so on the horizontal axis, right now it goes every two, two days, um, you know, by even numbers. And so we want it to go by every one day. So if I choose the one, then you can see now it goes one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to, to 19 days. Uh, if, I, if I take that away, then it goes back to being, you know, just two, four, six, eight. But again, the step value for major spacing, I'm just going to choose a one there and it gives me those individual days, all right? Now I need to fix my vertical axis. And so if I go to vertical axis, again, my step value right now, it's going zero, two, four, six, and eight. And so I wanna be able to, to see, um, you know, each individual centimeter uh, going up. So if I make it a step of one, it'll, it'll count up by ones. And then I also though wanna see kind of the half centimeters. And so that undergoes minor spacing type and you keep it as count and you just choose one here and that'll give you one line in between the two. And so that gives you that kind of half centimeter minor grid line going forward. Right? You may notice that I've got this kind of large gap here and that was because I don't have any data for uh, my day number nine um, and that is okay. Uh, that that's part of the science there. And we just, you know, understand that um, we didn't have any data for day number nine because it wasn't taken that day. And so that's that gap, all right? To put this into my data table, I go up to the three little dots and then I copy the chart. Right? And then I would go back into my data or my lab report and then under conclusions, I believe this is conclusion question. You'd have conclusion question number one, but then this is also uh, one, and this is conclusion question number two. And then I can just paste my chart into it like so, and there my chart fills in. And this is, is essentially your answer to conclusion question number two. All right. So that is how you make a line graph for the plant growth lab.